since we had the hard down move and the spies from 284, uh, we have been unable to hold above 282. And that's why in my long term, I'm still short a little spies. Um, and we are gapping down kind of to our target area from a couple days ago. Um, we're actually caught a little bit of a bid. Basically like 278, 70, 279. Technically a little bit below the support area would be a 2% pullback from the uh, from this high over here. But I mean, this seems about right to me. So um, I think you know 282 obviously is still a big level when we start to when we bounce again, but now that we're at lower prices, the first thing I would look for is if we catch a bid, do we actually make a lower high? That would create a channel on my oh, really a channel. But um, seller's definitely in control now. Um, the funny thing was, I actually put on, we shorted it 282 the day before, I took a quick scalp, went down like 50, 60 cents, 70 cents, something like that. Put it on again yesterday, and instead of giving it my usual 20, 30 cents, I kept it tighter. Because I think IBM overshot by about 30, 40 cents where I thought it would top out two days ago, and uh, changed my normal rule, got stopped, and then it had the hard reversal down a buck and a half. So. Um, but it's still have the shares from the long term back here when we failed below 284. And we got below, um, where was it? I guess below 283.50 right into here. Um, and I guess I'll cover those into a flush into this area here. So change in tone to me would be really hard move, gets above 280.50, and then has a second leg above 281 and closes back up in this area here. I think that would start to get some people excited again for the market to think about people testing the all-time highest. IWM. Um, it was a little bit cleaner from the 166 yesterday. This is what I was talking about when I was I was shorting it here a couple of days ago, and it, it just overshot to the upside before coming in. Um, yesterday, right on the open, got a little bit above 66 and then quickly got below, and it was a very clean down move all the way back down to support. So this is kind of what I was looking for the day before, or at least down a, you know, here or here. So and now we have kind of a range to work with on IWM on the upside at 66 by 60. This area here. Until we see closes up in this area here, yeah. um, sellers in control in IWM as well. And ultimately, it's the spot where we bought back here a couple months ago, uh, 62.50 if we take out the 60, 64. All right, so a lot going on. I'm going to quickly work through some names. So FTNT normally only trades 1.3 million shares, but today it should do at least 2.5, 3 million. Um, if you looked at the numbers and guides, they looked really good. Um, here's the daily. So the first thing I always do when the numbers are good and the guidance is good, I always want to check and see how much it's up this year versus the market. The market's kind of flattish this year, um, but this is up from the mid 40s. Had a nice consolidation here, and then broke out. We just had a bunch of little consolidations along the way, and just keeps on trending higher. And so the interesting thing to me about it, it was it was being accumulated ahead of earnings, and then people got nervous, and all these people who sold here are just now are they going to have to chase it it's above the all-time high right now? So my first inclination would be look at it on the long side. And at least up to seventy. It's actually already, the offer's already up to 70. It's kind of the top of this uptrend channel. So support would be kind of the fire resistance from a few days ago. 
Um, I put 1650 on the sheet, yes. So it's kind of this area. And this is kind of where you'd look for it to catch a bid, right? In the first spot to catch a bid. Um, looks like maybe it already dipped into there. We'll zoom in in a second. Go um, apron, APRN. 67, 80 is the next support. I guess I put that right there. And then after that, 6650, which is this right here. Okay, so it went up to 72 in the after hours. Um, it's normally a $2 ATR, so if you call it a $4 ATR today, this is this is a pretty good working range. A two, two ATR, 672 by 68. And then this area right here, I think if on the open it's, it, it's, it's having trouble here and gets below this, then I would look for the pull into you know, one of these two levels. Um, or the quick flush on the open to buy and then wait for move back to 70 and then kind of see and then ultimately if it consolidates above 70 that's when you feel comfortable to kind of hold the long and see what happens uh the next one is teva so teva i think it seems like it's probably more a product of the the run-up than the, the numbers being particularly bad um so let's look at the recent run-up so Feel like maybe I shorted this gap into 20. I don't remember the last trade I made in it. Um, so eventually it got up to kind of the recent bounce highs and consolidated above there and broke out. If we look at it and we say, okay, this move kind of started at, I thought this move kind of started at 19 when like gap here came off, did the retest. Um, of 17. I don't remember if we bought there. Um, then we got above 19 and consolidated and just kept on going, going up. Consolidated, consolidated, and this was the big move from 22 to 25 almost. 25, it did get to 25. So if you split the difference on this to this, that gets us this right here. So to me, that kind of seems about right. Um, Pull back to 22. It catches a bit above 22, move back into 23 here. If it's holding below 22, move into the next support area, which is right here. So I would think anything lower than this, um, it's probably going to end up looking like a pretty good buy over the next uh, week. We're seeing that a lot. Like uh, just going over some of the names. Um, like I was looking at WBA yesterday. If you go over the last, this is the great thing I love about having the calendar in the real time room is I can go back and kind of look at some of those bigger cap stocks that gap down in earnings where we said, oh, the numbers aren't that bad. It's just, you know, it's pulling back. If you look at those like a week, two weeks later, they catch, especially if you're swing trading, they're catching bids and really just running up a lot, filling gaps. Um, obviously, part of that is the market's had such a strong bid since the beginning of May, but that's the market we're in. So those bigger picture buying. The gap down. I even remember an MU the day we were looking at it in the low 50s, and I was long 52. And a couple of people I saw in the chat, somebody was like, I'm short it, um, which is fine from the You know, everyone has a different time frame. So you're scalping it short. But in the low 50s, you know, the, the upside was to 56 to 58. And so um, I'm thinking bigger picture generally um, for the most part. Um, so here's this. <laughs> so it's good. This is pretty clean technically right now in the pre-market. So it was going lower, caught a bid here, tried to pop back up, failed at 2220, and now they're holding 282. So this this pattern would have to change. It would have to be something like that. Sellers in control. Um, they're on the conference call right now. Again, down nine percent. So it's a lot. I just don't. I don't think it's going to have that much more downside. And flush to twenty-one, I think, would be pretty, pretty huge for it. Um, 
I'm going to shoot 2085. All right, Tesla. So Tesla is taking a wrecking crew. I think it's 40% short interest now. Um, you know, it's, it's really just about this battle where Musk has said they're not going to raise cash this year, and every, all these analysts say they're going to. And so I think they finished the quarter with $1.8 in cash, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the cash burn was 730 or 750 and the estimates were at 900 I think, or 850 maybe. Um, and so this, the next quarter, if that burn drops down to like four to 500, it's gonna be a bloodbath of the shorts like you wouldn't believe, especially if they talk about getting a production, test production of Model 3s much higher. Um, I think 330 kind of seemed about right to me. Like in the after hours when I saw it at 315, I was like, oh, that's not that much of a gap. I'm like, if it can stay below 320, maybe it'll come into 310 and we can play a move to like here, mid 320s. But now that it's above 330, I mean, you can argue that the shorts are feeling more pain here, so that maybe it'll go completely vertical to 340 today. But this is not a spot where I'd want to really be trying it on the long. Now, having said that, in the after hours when I looked at it, I thought that 323, 324 was interesting. Like if it got the 330 and it pulled into here, um, and then 320. So these are interesting spots to me. Um, if it closes above 330, we could be some see some pain tomorrow into this. I forget what caused this. Oh, the gap. This is what this was. They hit the 5,000 production mark. And they sold that gap up hard from 360 to 330. Um, people have gotten really negative on the stock the last few months. Just, I mean, Musk's Twitter craziness hasn't helped. But you know, settling in somewhere between like between 320 and 330, maybe for like a little bit, would be I think a pretty good trading range. Um, right now, buyers in control. I think I mean, buying in this 324 or 325 area, I'm sure people are going to do it and risk the below 320. I think that they can squeeze, you know, squeeze the shorts at least to the mid 330s or something. Um, it's going to be a tough stock. Like it's hard to risk less than a buck and a half, two bucks in this one. So that's why you try to capture five, six dollars at least. Um, we did Tesla, DXCM is the next one. Solid beat on rev, raised rev 7%. So the, the guidance they lowered, but it was like from 67 to 65, which seemed like really high gross margins to me. So I think that's why people are not really paying attention to that. But having said that, if we look at the daily chart on this one, and again, when you look at the news in terms of the way they, they beat revenues and they raise revenues there, I mean, they are crushing it. Um, I don't know what caused this gap down here. I don't remember trading it. The date is uh, September 27th which um, is my ex-girlfriend's birthday from many years ago. Um, so I don't know if we traded it here, but when it got back above 50, it's been pretty good since then. And then it broke out above 60, broke this downtrend. So where was it? In January, it was low 50s, and so it's doubled. So it's been on a tear. This is another one where they um, where they sold it coming into earnings. I love I love stocks that get sold into earnings and then blow numbers out and raise guidance. It's just looks the chase is on. The problem in this case is <laughs> it's already gapping above 110, so. The chase is really on, which makes the risk reward not as good. Um, the other thing I love about this is the people who always like say things like, "Oh, it sold off in front of earnings," and then the number, the bad number comes out, and it's bad. And it's like people knew it leaked. What about it sold off in front of earnings, and the fucking numbers were really good, and they raised guidance? How about people didn't know anything, and people make bets before earnings both ways? Stop with the conspiracy nonsense. Um, All right, it's up. It's up twenty three percent. I mean, the whole thing's ridiculous. It's it's up twenty three percent. 
I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be like wild on the open, but honestly, like this much of an up move, even if, let's say assuming they hadn't sold off from 104, it's still up. What is that? Well, that's not as much, but it's still up like 10, 13 percent from if it hadn't sold off, and they're raising uh, revenue guidance seven percent, so it's a double. I mean, this really is where it's gapping right here. Really, is best case scenario. Um, a down move to 112 to 110 would be pretty normal. So let's see what it did. I mean, initial reaction, it got to 110, pulled into here. So I mean, I think at a minimum, the down move to here, a test of kind of the high levels from the after hours. Yeah, W is another really hard stock to trade. Interest in human sports, you see a hold. Yeah, I had, a, as I told you in yesterday's morning meeting, I had a script in to buy it. I think I'm long it still, but I think it filled for all my bids. Um, and then W is a really hard stock to trade. It's even harder than the stocks I've talked about, probably. So, but if you're an experienced trader, you definitely can trade it. Um, next one is Apple. Um, so Apple was, was pretty good yesterday. It's funny, it like it hit right on the open, which we wanted to see. I did get long it down here. Um, below 98. I couldn't get hit um, at the pre-market support. People got hit there. It was pretty good. Um, and then I actually, you know, as long as it was below the morning high, I stayed shorted until finally I kept on holding the bid here at 98.35. You know, I, would, I was like shorting it at the 99, covering. And, and then I thought one time maybe it would roll over and test the pre-market low, and it never did. And that's why I flipped to long right here on the screen bar. Um, it was just like consolidating here. It got rejected here. When it got rejected here and then didn't roll over below 98, I was like, okay, next time if it gets through 98, it's probably gonna take out the pre-market eye. So that's why I flipped along here. Um, and then, actually, I take that back. I flipped along above the pre-market eye. <laughs> My memory's getting really bad. So I remember thinking it's gonna take out the pre-market eye when it did this. And, and then I flipped along here, um, sold somewhere into this. Uh, wasn't on the desk for the retest of the break of the pre-market high breakout. That was probably one of the better trades of the day, although it probably looked scary, I imagine, when it came down here. But this is where it broke out from. It retested. Um, and then I'm sure people were accumulating here thinking it would take out the high, which it didn't do. It failed. Came back one more time. And you know, notice people were like waiting to buy it as it got into this area here. Closed at the high. So let's see where we are this morning. Um, again, there's no resistance overhead, buyers in control. The only thing that would kind of start to get me thinking short again would be like if it started to hold below 199. So, yeah, I mean, so people are going to buy it into this, and what people would probably get more aggressive is if it flushed right through there, it came into this. And if you're buying into this, you can't risk too much. You can risk like here or something and what you want to see is it just take it get back above this and then get above 201 and none of that may happen it may just actually shake off this down move in the market today and actually consolidate above 201 and then you kind of see what happens um, and then finally Zen this didn't do anything yesterday it, it's it, <laughs> it popped on the open um, I shorted a little bit right on the open and then when it popped to 62, my plan was to short a little bit more. And if it got, if it reversed there and got below 60, get really aggressive on the short side. But it went back down to 60, held a bit, and then just moved sideways the rest of the day. So I didn't do anything. Just held the little shares I shorted, like you know, here and here on the open, um, with like a stop here or add here. Um, it'll be interesting to see with the weakness in the market today if it if breaks below here. So I have alerts here and here to see if it breaks to the downside. Um, alerts here and here to see if it breaks to the upside. Um, and since we're finishing so early, before 15 after, I will take a quick look at W. Um, so it already bounced. So my feeling on W is people try to short this a lot, and it's actually they do really well. It's like kind of like heated like Tesla, but probably much better fundamentals than Tesla, I think. Um, and so yeah, so I mean it already bounced. So. I guess the way I would look at it now is, um, can it hold this area here? You know, this would be the long area to this. 
Um, but again, I didn't spend any time looking at it because I just find it's the spread's wide. It's a very difficult stock to trade. Um, it's a battleground. It's like Tesla Jr. almost. Um, but obviously, um, really strong stock. I think Citron called for a short somewhere, maybe this move right here, this down move from 120. So Citron, obviously, they probably covered into this down move. 